Robert. We are uh, bringing it back to basics. This has been a long time coming, I think. Yeah. Um, we're going to, I don't know, some would say this would be kind of a big core of what a Buchla setup is. Like, you don't see these two modules not in a setup. They're kind of standards. Yeah, they, and the four space system is always an oscillator, the 266E, and the 281E, and the 292E, or the little half module version of it. The yeah. H's, those are pretty cool. Um, it's essential. I mean, I don't know how one could have a Buchla system without a 281E in it, or the 292E, or the, or the knockoffs. Mm hmm. <laughs> Dem clones. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about the quad dynamics jan- uh, manager and the quad function generator. So, to start out with the, um, the quad dynamics manager, we're going to. So, there's three modes to it there's a uh, just a VCA, which they're calling a gate, a uh, low pass mode, which um, it, yeah, will kind of. It, rolls off the highs and the lower and as you go up um it kind of gets more squelchier in a way um and then there's a combo mode which kind of goes in between them so um here is just a sweep of the vca so just very clean yeah, it's opening and closing the VCA yeah. gain knob. No character. And then you if we go to the low pass mode. I love that sound. That's like quintessential Buchla. And uh and then you can go to the combo mode, so it's mixing both. And that combo mode will sound the same as the low pass mode because essentially it's putting a VCA in front of the low pass gate. So as you sweep the gain up, you know, it sounds the same. But when we start throwing um, envelopes into it, then we'll open and close that that low pass gate and then it'll sound a lot different. It's pretty cool. Yeah, there's um, there's more of a ring out. And I think it has to do with the, um, the Vactrals uh, that are in this module. Um, when in combo mode there's kind of a after you hit it there's kind of a a ring out after that initial pluck which we'll get into so uh so yeah there's four of these a b c and d um just regular inputs and outputs there's control voltage in for each of these and then there's also for the e series they added a velocity input so it's four gray inputs with each of the uh I think I think you activated my Siri. He wants to tell us more about the low pass gate. <laughs> that was random. <laughs> that happens in meetings at work. Um, Why don't you start that part over? With, with philosophy. Right. So the um, the addition in the two hundred E series was the uh, were velocity inputs um, for each one of the channels, and. I know that's a that's new. It wasn't on the uh, previous uh, 200 series um, gate. Uh, essentially, the old 200 series gate was kind of the same thing, except for the the velocities. Um, and those basically, if you add more voltage, the um, yeah, it's hard to. <laughs> they're like they're sort of like voltage control over the gain. Mm-hmm. Um, if you think about patching an envelope into the A input and then you, you turn the knob and you'll set that knob to a certain, you know, you'll open the gain up manually to a, a max, you know, like, or like, basically like a base. So if you set it halfway, then the VCA is halfway open. And when the black CV input takes an envelope, it would open the VCA all the way to 10 and then go back down to five where you have it open. Mm-hmm. With the velocity input, you have voltage control over the gain. So that means as you, for example, go from zero to 10 with an envelope in the black input, you can send a control voltage to velocity and control that max amplitude Mm -hmm. or set the gain really low. So you could have it to where the, um, 
it will, instead of going all the way open, you kind of have it halfway open like through the velocity. So that makes for some really interesting um, modulation with volume because as you, for example, if you had two outputs from the, um, the 261E and you had them into two inputs on the 292E, you could use amp that volume modulation to bring one or the other one in and out, even though they're on you know, different envelopes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think we can probably demonstrate that a little bit later, right? Yeah, we'll get into that. Um, when we were playing around with it before, I kind of looked at it as um, being able to double gate something. So instead of taking um, like the output of uh, channel A into um, the input of channel B and um, having two different types of control voltage uh, to both of those channels, uh, maybe like an, a slow evolving envelope while a pulsing one is underneath it. Um, you can do that all within the velocity and uh, and the regular CVN. I, I use the velocities inputs a lot when I perform live because um, I use the 223E and kind of and the, um, the R and the S, kind of the joystick pads mm -hmm. on the 223 to bring things in and out like a mixer. That way I don't have to mess with the 227E's knobs. Yeah, it's kind of uh, at your fingertips instead yeah, of... so I use it like a VCA kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then to switch over to the quad function generator, um, it's four attack decay envelopes. Uh, they have three different input types, so they can be self, um, uh, self cycling. Uh, and then there's a uh, input trigger for just a, um, uh, I guess it's not, what's the, uh, just um, a transient input? Is that what they call that? Where it just is like the one, it'll just go through. Yeah, self-cycling, transient is, self-cycling is a little, look looks like a bunch of little triangles. Mm -hmm. Transient is the, what, um, I think Todd Barton called it a TP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one is sustain which looks like um, part of a trapezoid. And that's, that input is really commonly used in, in key, with keyboards or other touch controllers. Yeah, so if you're holding down uh, a key on a, a touch controller, it'll the note will stay there, where if you have it in transient mode, it'll just go through the cycle of the attack decay and stop until it gets another, um, another pulse. I think that's pretty much how most envelope generators work. I'm looking at my big 5U system. None of my... EGs are self-cycling. They mm -hmm. all take a control input. So that transient mode in the 281E would work just like those, yeah. those EGs. Yeah, so where I think the self-cycling thing is, um, yeah, pretty specific to, to Buchla compared to, to Moog. Um, there are CV inputs for the attack and decay knobs. Um, the range for the attack and decay knobs are, would we say, one thousandth? A thousandth of, of a second to ten seconds. Yeah, which um, ten seconds, it's, like, it's not that long, so you could take it basically, it's 20 seconds if you have them both all the way up to, to complete the function. But um, I did an experiment where I put 10 volts into the attack and cranked that all the way up, and... Um, I got a 40, it was like either 43 or 47 minute attack. Did you time it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was a fun experiment. And, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so with a little bit more voltage, they can expand, uh, quite a bit more. I like to use the 266E, um, the fluctuating voltages into attack and decay. Yeah. And that's really fun. Yeah. To get, um, and then also to have that triggered, um, elsewhere. And so every time it re-triggers, um, it will, you know, instead of, if you had it f cycling by itself, um, it, you know, you could get into one of those long 10-minute <laughs> yeah. modes, as long as if you, you didn't, um, uh, I guess it's fluctuating, but... I think, I think for my next live performance, you know, they're about 20 minutes, I might just have one envelope <laughs> yeah and just like finish the whole piece in yeah. one like <laughs> just hit start and put my hands up right and just let the whole the whole thing run on its own um so obviously there's a cv out and there's also a pulse out um and then so yeah there's four of these and they're at the bottom of the module there's a uh, quadrature mode which um links the uh, a and b uh, function generators and then the c and d function generators 
Um, so they kind of work together. And after um, the f- first function finishes, the second one starts. Yeah, I got, I'm going to try to explain this the way I understand it. Um, when you're in quadrature mode and A and B are linked, the it makes it into kind of like an ADSR. So the attack knob in A is the attack. The decay knob in um, A is decay. Then the attack knob in B is sustain. And the decay knob in B is release. Mm-hmm. So you, not in a literal sense, but that's kind of the out, one of the types of outcomes you can get from that. Yeah. And then we have the ORS section, uh, which is two knobs and two uh, CV outputs. And basically it's um, mixing between um, uh, function A and function B on the first uh, output and then function C and function D on the second. Um, So I think all the way to the left would be on the top one would just be section A and then you can bleed in more of of, uh, uh, section B's CV. And you have those on your 292C, right? Yeah, so all of it's... Yeah, and this is basically the same, except for um, uh, the um, quadrature (laughs) are buttons on the E version instead of switches. Instead of switches. So, um, so yeah, not a ton of difference between the old 200 series and the 200E. Well, you know, the ORs aren't under E. They're not under preset management. They have white knobs. So I wonder, and maybe mm. someone who's listening can can email and let us know, but I wonder if the circuit for the ORs is the same kind of circuit that was in the original 292. Mm. Like maybe mm-hmm. there's a reason that it's not under preset management. That would be interesting to find out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, to show basically, so you have a, um, what's also cool is when these modules are side by side, uh, the little shorting bars can connect from, the um basically the quad function generators um a output into the quad dynamics managers a cv input and on down the line so um so yeah you don't have as much of a cable kind of mess and you can um a lot of people will will leave those um plugged in but it is good to kind of break that and maybe have envelopes go into other control voltage processors and, and then back into the uh, dynamics manager. Yeah, in the last episode, I think I mentioned that I have the 281E on the left and the 254E quad control voltage processor in the middle and then the 292E on the right because I got that idea from Doug. But for today, Kyle messaged me on his way over here and said, put those together. It's like, <laughs> sir, yes, sir. <laughs> so I pulled them out and, and connected them. But you know, the the default, I think, is to have them next to each other. And the shorting bars, the connections are set up by design for them to be shorted together and with the shorting bars, connected with the shorting bars. And when you look at older systems, pictures of older systems, they're connected that way too. So of course there's nothing wrong, nothing bad or anything about having them right next to each other. I bet 99% of people do. And it is certainly very convenient to leave them connected because then you always have an envelope opening a VCA. Mm -hmm. Um, But what I've started doing so in this configuration, I'll probably leave it this way for a while, is have the um, move the 254E so that's down next to my other control voltage processor. And that way I can kind of have a, um, for lack of a better term, matrix of CV processing out of the 281E and then back into itself or into the 292. Mm -hmm. But the only reason really to go into that is that the 281E is way more than an envelope generator. It's not, I mean, I wouldn't even call it an envelope generator. It just happens to make envelopes in addition to a lot of other things. But it's kind of the the foundation of control voltage source in a Buchla system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, leaving it connected to the 292E, folks might forget that. Um, but it, it does so much. I mean, I've seen systems that have as many as three 281Es in them. Yeah, it, it almost is like you can never have enough. <laughs> yeah, kind of enough function generators in yeah. Buchla. Yeah. Um, all right, so to show off the cycling um, input on the uh, 281E, I'll... Uh... So 
I have the attack all the way down um, and the decay up to about 0.10 on this one. And if you turn the decay down, it's obviously just going to ramp up to get into kind of... And the 292 is in combo mode. So yeah, I'll, I'll then kind of go... Um, so I'm, it's in combo mode now. I'll go to... There's low pass. There's gate. Yeah, which bypasses the LPG entirely. Yeah, so they all have their different... Now we're back at combo. So they definitely have three pretty distinct sounds. Yeah. Um, that all have their uses. one. Alright, so that's the self-cycling. Let's patch the 223E pulse output. So we set it to transient. That'll finish up. So now we're setting the mode for, or the um, the pulse input type to transient, the little TP, and tax down to about 0 0.001, and it decays right about in the middle. So when now when I strike a key or strike a touchpad on the 223, so that's in combo mode. So when I hold down on the key, it's not in sustain mode. So it just however long the the um, Attack of the care set to the pulse is just going to fire those. Yeah, so if I ramp that up a bit. And then if we switch it over to sustain, so Robert's holding it. Yeah, I can even put it all the way down. To, now attack and decay all the way down, so it's more like an on off. So if we turn the attack up on that, on the sustain, this is kind of neat. I'll change it to low pass. Get that cool. I like that. Yeah. So that's just your kind of basics, but um, but yeah. Now we'll get into maybe some other cool things. Uh, I'm figuring out how to to patch this thing up. Uh, fast pulse um, coming out of the section B of the 281, and that's going into uh, section B of the 292. Um, but what we have going on here is, uh, so the oscillator is going into A, but output of A is going uh, into the input of B. So that's where we're getting the two different control voltages, um, but only one, uh, affecting the signal, but it's only one signal. So you can hear that here. So we've kind of had that slow uh, rise and fall, but it's being pulsed very quickly by the uh, And both uh, channels are in combo mode. Um, what is kind of neat is you can um, change up the different uh, gate modes. So if we put maybe the, the slow rise and fall in low pass. Cool. Um, and maybe we, we do a... This is just a gate, um, the VCA on section B with the low pass mode going on the first one. So that's maybe go to both low pass. No, I think that, that bubbly sound is really neat. Yeah. Or we, maybe we go. Oh, the yeah, gate on A and low pass gate on B. Yeah. yeah VCA on A. Yeah. That's yeah. an interesting thing about this. The, the label says gate, which technically it is a gate. I think of it as a, like a VCA sort of, but low pass gate and gate are two different things. <laughs> but yeah. you know, it's a little confusing at first, but when, when you know it, it works just like a VCA. Um, but with this, we can also um, 
to another way that we could kind of go about doing this um, uh, all in one channel. So I'm going to, um, we're going to use the velocity mm. input. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're hearing A, that um, envelope that's kind of opening and closing it, coming out of A. So I'm going to patch that rapid cycle out of that rapid envelope out of B into the velocity input on A in combo mode. Now one of the, it sounds very, very similar, but one main difference is that now we only have one mode for the channel because we're only using A. So if I cycle through those, here's a combo. There's low pass. And there's gate. So unlike the other method, there's there's no way to you know mix them together. Yeah, you don't have you that, only have that one that channel. extra variation. But but yeah, getting the same kind of idea across. But then you're using the only one channel, which is kind of nice if you have many different signals going on. Yeah, um, it's kind of a cool thing about the velocity input. So there are some really neat things you could do with that. You know, especially if you were to have like a sequencer that's doing the pulse input on, on B mm -hmm. and then you could have I, I, I'm kind of thinking out loud here but it seems like you would be able to do a hocketing type thing where you're sending the same sequence to two different um, oscillators mm -hmm. and switch between them with that velocity yeah input. just kind of have different accents yeah and, you see, and so you're only opening the velocity using velocity to open up a channel every other note mm -hmm. so it goes one three five seven on a and then two four six eight on b mm -hmm. and get that pocketing approach something worth trying out sometime that just popped in my head yeah. let's do something really fun yeah so we've got uh we've got all four channels of both the quad function generator and the quad dynamics manager uh, in play here and we're doing cascading envelopes i guess or pulsed yeah pulses so um so we've got a trigger going into the input of uh, of uh, function generator a and once that goes through its cycle it's going to um, the output pulse is going to trigger the uh, function generator b and that's going to run through the same thing and then into C and into D, so it's all going to kind of cascade down the line. It's kind of um, functions sort of like pulse divider in a way. Using the attack and decay knobs for each subsequent section, you can get a um, you can set the timing of the pulse output because the pulse will fire at the end of the envelope. Yeah, so we'll get into maybe. Um, so this is just triggered by the 223, a pulse from there, but we're going to go into self-cycling, which will also kind of mess with that as well. Yeah. You ready to hear it? Yeah. Let's see if people kind of recognize what we were doing. Too bad we don't have a, an E channel for that last <laughs> note. <laughs> so. So yeah, it's kind of going down the line for all four oscillators. So if we then put in, um, <laughs> so funny. into self-cycling mode. Switching a couple to uh, the combo. 
too much fun. <laughs> There's a nice ping in there that I like a lot. This, this here. This. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, just such a versatile module, you know. Kyle, was, I was just sitting here listening while Kyle was turning knobs and things, and uh, just on the 281E. And if you watch the video as a Patreon subscriber, you can see that there's, there's a really cool visual cause and effect relationship as the blue LEDs light up on the, on the envelope outs, and, um, which really helps to understand what this is doing. But it's a very simple patch, mm -hmm. very simple, but it has a lot of sonic characteristics that uh, I think are really interesting. Okay, so now we're going to show off um, a little bit on the uh, attack and decay inputs and self-patching the quad function generator to itself. So we've got uh, section A that's self-cycling um, at a pretty short pulse, and then we have um, we have the output pulse of that going into uh, the section B of the quad function generator. And that CV is going back into the attack of the section A <laughs> function generator. <laughs> Got all if that? that makes sense. Yeah. Go check out the video. Um, so if we bring that up, it's a pretty straightforward rhythm in both the attack and decay on section B or, or all the way down. But if I start bringing up the decay, have a look at quadrature mode. Um, let me explain the patch setup and then uh, Kyle will walk us through it. Really basic. We have a section A shorted to, uh, of the 281 East, shorted to um, section A of, or input A of the 292E. And we have one audio source coming out of the 25080, uh, the dual programmable oscillator, into the A section of the 292E. And that's it. We just have a really short attack, kind of a decent decay. Yes. So show us what you did, Kyle. So, um, so I'm going to put it in self-cycling mode, so we don't have this in quadrature mode yet. Sounds like the opening to the show. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, you can hear just this straight rhythm pulse. Like if we were going to, um, if we we're going to shorten the decay on this one, obviously it gets much faster longer it's going to go longer but if you put it in quadrature mode so i'm pressing the quadrature button now um the attack and decay knobs of section b come into play so essentially we have to thank todd for this the um the attack now on section b becomes uh kind of like a sustain yeah so it's, it's sort of an asdr yeah so it's like attack from section a is attack, sustain is the attack from section B. Then we go to okay. decay uh, back on section A and uh, release. And the release is the, it sets the time between the envelopes. 
So I think that's probably best. Yeah. So if I so basically on section B, both knobs are all the way down. But if I start to turn up the decay on section B, you can here it's the same interval like the attack. Um, the the pulse is still the same, but it's taking more time to re-trigger because there's it's going through this release period on section B. So if I pump that way up. Um, and then if we bring in the attack on section B, that's a, a nice sustain. So that pulse is just it's being sustained more. So you can really. Yeah. So kind yeah. of, kind of, you know, another way, kind of like an ADSR, but yeah, kind of, or an ASDR. And the, in the um, the five view format, Moon Modular makes an ASDR, so the attack, sustain, decay, release, and that is kind of familiar to uh, compared to what we're doing here. And you could patch a audio to section B and have that second part of the quadrature envelope do some interesting things with that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty neat. Pretty cool. Now we're at what might be my favorite part of this episode the ORS mode on the 281E. This was such a cool effect when, when we figured out how to make this work. Yeah, don't sleep on the ORS. Um, I do find myself sleeping on it a lot, but every time I, I use it, I'm like, oh man, this is so useful. Um, so yeah, what ORS basically does is um, it combines section A and B or C and D, and there's an output and you basically, all the way to the left, you're going to hear um, whatever A is, um, the CV out from A. And as you turn it to the right, it starts blending in uh, the CV from section B. So right here, what we're going to do is um, put this into the 227E to kind of get some stereo panning effects. Um, so we have this... Um, set on so section a of the 281 is just this long attack and decay it's a, um, a 10 second on each on the attack and the decay so you can just slowly hear it pan from left to right and as we move up the or section um, we're going to hear section b get added in and that's more of a pulsing uh faster function that's going start to hear that come in and that's about halfway up so it's just gra that will kind of peek through <laughs> gradually so we'll leave it here for a second and you can hear it pulse there so then we want that. more so we're going to crank that up um, so this is about three quarters of the way up That's a really neat effect. So the 227E has quad output. So if we, we don't need to do it right now, but theoretically, how could we use the ORs with the 227E's four channels to do, I guess we could have the front and the back switch between each other. You know, A, A and B switch with C and D, with uh, forward and back panning on, with the oars, just like we're doing from left to right. So we could do left to right and front to back and quad to move the sound all over the room. Yeah, for sure. Under voltage control. Um, even if, well, we, yeah, and that kind of, if we did the cascading um, uh, points too, that might help. Yeah. We kind of had each one um, plugged into one another. But, um, but yeah, I use this, uh, this type of effect patch for velocity just to instead of just a slow kind of left to right pan adding in that um that kind of b section that's got a little pulsing um and they're kind of out of phase with each other so they um you know pops in and out at random times 
You know, we should make sure we ask Nathan Moody about how we could mix this effectively. Yeah, without getting a crazy uh, phase cancellation. Yeah.